Hi folks, I'm Sherry Martin. Welcome back to Heart of the Home at Harris Acres. Today we've left the farm, but we brought some toys from the farm with us and I have a great guest. Bob and I are gonna talk about my buddy, Bob Edwards, and I are gonna talk about John Deere tractors. Now John Deere tractors have been around Harris Farm since 1929. Bob, have you been around here that long? Not quite. Not quite. <laughs> well, I haven't, but some days I feel like I have. Bob and I have done, how many years have you been collecting tractors? Probably about uh, 12 to 14, I okay. guess. Okay, and you got my husband involved in it about maybe eight well, years ago? Well, that's the question about who got who involved uh -oh. in it. Uh-oh, uh-oh, <laughs> uh-oh. Uh, now in JS, he may have been the ringleader. Right. Well, I started, I, I had a couple of caterpillars before. Okay. And he got me into John Deere's. I okay. And the reason he got you into John Deere's, and I have heard this many times, honey, we're buying these because they're a great investment. You can always double your money on a John Deere. It's just like I drive Chevrolets. Because in my husband's mind, the whole world should drive a white Chevrolet. Because at the end of the deal, it always brings more money. And he collected John Deere because he says it is a good way to make money. And you've done that, haven't you? You've bought yes. some really, really rare ones. Right, yes, I have. Uh, I haven't sold a lot of them, but I did sell one uh, a couple of weeks ago and uh, didn't really want to sell it, but... <clears throat> the Somebody man, made an offer. The <clears throat> man made me an offer that... Uh, <laughs> Couldn't refuse. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, you were around JS a long time, yeah, right. so you know, that's right, that's right. So, and the difference in men and boys is the price of their toys. Right. That's right, that's right. He used to come in and he'd say, you know, I found another really great deal. And I'm like, oh my goodness. Well, when he was diagnosed with cancer, we were sitting in the oncologist's office and the oncologist looked at him and he said, Mr. Martin, do you have a hobby? And my husband said, no. And I looked at him and I said, pardon me. I said, you go to Canada hunting and you collect John Deere tractors. I said, you have one of the largest collections in the world. And I said, you don't call that a hobby? He said, well, I do that to make money. And I said, no, you do that because you enjoy it and it's fun. And before he passed away, that day they told us he had six months to live. At that time, he'd bought 54, 54 tractors from Canada to Western, like Washington, Oregon, Kansas. And my goal was to collect all the tractors and have them here in Jasper before he died. I did that, didn't I? Yes, you did. I did. It, it took some effort. Right, and it was a day to see him when, when they came in on the trailers and he came out and looked at them and oh, yeah. helped unload them and everything. Yeah, yeah. Even though he was feeling bad, but he was right. smiling. Right, He would have a chemo treatment and then come in and he'd want to walk out there and see what had come in that day and he was so excited about it. And, and he really did enjoy it. And I said, you know, that's one of the things about life. I collect iron skillets and I have this tiny iron skillet and then I have a huge iron skillet, and it's fun. It's fun to collect things, and it's fun to do things that you enjoy. You and your wife travel a lot now and look for antiques, and, and you do antique tools, don't you? Yes, I do. And, uh, of course, she looks for uh, female antique. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, But we also uh, schedule some of the trips around uh, tractor shows that mm -hmm. we, we've gone to uh, Oklahoma and plan a trip around that. Uh, and spend time on the way out and the way back. Right. And we've gone to Iowa and also have gone to New York State. And, wow. Uh, and just, uh, but spend the time on the trip. Uh, uh -huh. Enjoying each other's company. Uh, right. Yeah. And uh, also shopping along the way and right. everything else. Right. We went to Vermont to pick up a car and uh, I'd never been, I'd never been anywhere on the East Coast. And uh, when we did this, JS found this car up in Vermont. We drove up there to get it. It was the day after Christmas, it was snow and it was beautiful. And if we hadn't been doing something he loved, I wouldn't have had this, I, the scenery was gorgeous. And I love photography, so I took a lot of pictures while we were right. on that trip. So together, we did things that we both enjoyed, but were different. And uh, talk about different. Now, JS and I were different. I'm very high geared, very high, highly motivated. Was he laid back? Right. <laughs> Bad laid back. <laughs> I teased him and told him he had to have been from Alabama because he was very laid back. Right. And, and it was funny because when we got married, I know his mama thought, this will never work because she's high geared and he's, you know, but for 27 years, we complimented each other. You know, right. if he wanted it done, he picked up the phone and called me, you know, right. so, and, uh, and that's kind of how we got all those tractors in. I was on a mission 
because it was important to me that he get to see these things before he left this world. Right. And he did. He did. He got to see them all. And I was so proud of that. And, um, and the look on his face, you're right about that. Right. And it was so marvelous that you were able to accomplish that too. <laughs> it, uh... Sometimes I think this is not going to work, but it did. It did. And it gave him something to look forward to. And you know, the doctors had given him six months. He made it 11 months and three weeks. And um, I remember right after he passed away, it was time for Relay for Life. And somebody came up to me, and I was raising money for Relay for Life. And, and um, I don't know why, but they were real negative about it. And they said, how could you do something like that after cancer took your husband? And I looked at them, and I said, okay, I'm a Christian, and I believe that you leave here when God says it's time. And God chose to take him, and God chose to give him a promotion. And that was the end of the story. And I looked at that lady, and I said, you're wrong. I said, uh, cancer didn't take my husband. God decided it was time. And she said, well, whatever. you know. And I thought, mm, no, that's a terrible attitude. But I really felt that way. And I felt that we were able to do the things we were because that was in God's plan. And there's nothing I could do to change it. So That's exactly right. And, uh, you're and here because you're in God's plan because how many times were you going to be dead? Oh, about three <laughs> times. And, that's uh, right. And uh, I did a lot of traveling and trying to get all that done before. And right. yet I've... Uh, you're still didn't here. Didn't expect to make it 10 years, and I've made it 22 past that's that right. point. So, that's right. Uh, that's right. That's right. How many heart attacks have you had? Uh, three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and you have done so much good in the time you have been allowed to be here. You've helped get kids to church that normally wouldn't have a way to church. Right. I know you did the bus program at the church, and, and that was something that hadn't been done, and you just kind of took it on. Right. and did it and uh, and it was good for the kids and it was good for the church because they got a lot of new members that way too didn't they yeah and they of course they retired me from that when I got 70 right said I was too old to do Boy, that that was a mistake <laughs> that was a mistake now you and I are going to talk today about your tractors and the fact that you've brought us some samples of your tractors the little ones like you have the big ones don't you yes the four we see sitting over here on this side of the table are <clears throat> are well, the three tractors with the wheels on them are actually the largest John Deere of that vintage. Mm -hmm. The uh, first one there is a John Deere uh, D, which is a 1948, and that's the largest one they made that year. Wow. And the one here, uh, the R, there's a little story behind that one because... Well, when we come back, we're going to hear that story okay. because I want you to share the things that you've done. I know you've done parades. You've done tractor shows. And you have one of your tractors outside my business, and I see children out there with their parents having their picture made on the tractor. Right. And they love it. They love right. it. So when we come back, guys, we're going to take a short break, and then Bob and I are going to come back. And we hope today we teach you how special collecting is because it gives you a mission, and it gives you something to look forward to, doesn't right. it? And it's kept you here. The good Lord and John Deere's may have helped keep you here just a little while longer. Stay tuned, guys. We'll be right back. Folks, I'm glad you're back with us. Bob and I are going to continue talking about boys and their toys. And now when you started doing this, did you ever dream you would reach as many people as you've reached, meet as many people as you've met? No, not really. And, uh, and I really never intended to collect this many or uh, didn't realize a lot about it. I just had gone along and saw old farm implements sitting out in driveways and stuff like that or out in front of old farms and uh -huh. so forth and kind of thought well that's kind of neat one day I'll have an old rusty tractor sitting out there or something but when I uh, got a tractor and restored it and then went to a show the favor and the everybody favor. Right, <laughs> and everybody came and looked at it and uh, everything you just got you got a rush there and oh, people yeah. enjoying uh, oh, yeah. something that you had. And uh, so it was a pleasure to watch those people enjoy Right, it. And, and to bring memories to them. Right. Because many of them's parents or grandparents had these tractors. Right. Now, do you know the story about when we bought Harris Farm and no. J.S. opened the barn and his granddaddy's John Deere was sitting in there? No, I haven't heard that one. Well, mm -hmm. it's still in there. And, um, you know, J.S. only lived a year after we bought the farm. But the day we closed on the farm, he went through all the old buildings and he opened the, the building that had the, it had like a mowing blade and different things in it. And he came out and he said, oh my gosh, the John Deere's in there. 
So we have a big John Deere sign on the barn at the farm, and, and John Deere's been a big part of the things that we enjoyed doing together. And, and one of the things, um, you had my son in a parade the year his dad died. And we did the parade in memory of J.S. and your brother who died that year. Right. Remember that? Yeah. And I said it, it was amazing to go down through Main Street and see all the people who gathered and, and were waving and, and throwing kisses and just because they knew that uh, that was a special day for us. It was, it was right after he passed away. And Nick was on a John Deere. You were on a John Deere. And then you had a couple more. And do you know I still get cards from Richard Snow, one of the guys who was in the parade that day, who... Um, I guess we just talked that day about JS a little bit, and uh, he sent me a couple of cards later and said how much he had enjoyed that day. Well, that's wonderful. Mm. And I thought that was pretty neat. So you've made a lot of friends, and you've done a lot of things for kids that uh, I know the kids look so forward to you being in the parade. Now, this was in the parade this year, wasn't it? Yes, that was kind of a spur of the moment. I was going to be out of town and didn't have time to prepare everything. Didn't think I was going to be here on the 4th of July, but I got home about eight o'clock that night and came up with a brainstorm that I could drive that in the parade. Uh -huh. <laughs> so without and you a did. lot of preparation. Uh -huh. So all I had to do was add the flag to it and uh, which I'm known in the parade for having flags on oh, everything. Yes. Oh yes. And uh, remember the day it snowed and you had all your tractors lined up in front of my business and I got there that morning and I had a digital camera and I took some awesome pictures. Right. And those flags waving in that snow and those John Deere tractors, it's beautiful. Well, you know, people have asked me about those tractors, why they were down there and why I didn't take them home and, and put them in my barn and so forth. And uh, I said, but nobody sees them. That's right. So people get to enjoy them That's down right. there. That's right. That's right. And so long as they're not being damaged, I've... I've right. And honestly, every day we would look out there and people would be taking pictures of their children or themselves with those tractors. Right. So um, they've made a lot of friends. They've made a lot of friends. Right. Well, that's the thing for, for young children to see these uh, older tractors and see uh, older equipment and, and things that are used on the farm in days gone by. They, they would never see that today right. because they don't see that type of operation anymore. That's right. So it educates them and, uh, and that also keeps this alive and uh, brings new uh, people into the to the hobby of, of collecting these right, things and so right. forth. And, and you know, one of the things you have done is take the old treadle saw machines and make them into tractors. Yes, I've, uh, I won't take credit for that idea because right. I saw that at a tractor show in Florida. Mm -hmm. And uh, all the way home, I had to look for me a sewing machine because mm -hmm. I was gonna make me a tractor. And how many have you it. made now? <laughs> I have made, a, I think, about eight or nine of them, and, uh, and, uh, but different models mm -hmm. of it. And I tried to get a little more elaborate and make, the, make it steer and, uh, and <laughs> different things on it uh, from the one, the original model I saw. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting about that is when I go to a show, I get more attention out of about five or six of those little tractors because the women and children come along and that catches their eye. Right. The men will walk by and look at the big tractors, but when you go to a tractor show and there's 150 tractors there, but there's nothing like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it really, uh, it draws more attention. Right. Than, and uh, I could be sitting there with all these other tractors on display and have more people looking at those. So I've begun to travel light nowadays. Mm -hmm. I can take these and smaller things. And it's easier, things, isn't it? And it's easier to, to do instead of hooking up a freight liner and mm -hmm. hauling these big tractors to show. Right. I can hook up my pickup. And uh, as you know, I also have some John Deere snowmobiles. Oh, yes. And oh, that's yes. a little bit rare. I take those down to Florida, uh -huh. and they kind of catch an eye in Florida. Uh -huh. with, I can imagine with they With snowmobiles. And uh, I don't think there's any more of them in, Al in uh, Georgia either. So now, are your 60 models? In they're the 60s? in the, the uh, late, uh, the, the uh, John Deere snowmobiles are about uh, 78 and 79 okay. models. Right. And they haven't made any of those since 1983. Mm -hmm. So they're all. I remember uh, the day we had snowmen sitting on them down in front of the shop. Now, right. that's an attention getter. Well, an interesting story there. I sold my four-wheel drive pickup truck here last year 
because since I've got my snowmobiles, I've decided, decided it's not going to snow in Jasper anymore. So, <laughs> so I, I sold my four-wheel drive truck that sat in the barn and I didn't have to use it all this time. But uh, it's all been an interesting trip uh, of all this. and uh, A lot of memories, a lot of fun. Oh, yes. Right. And and honestly, JS enjoyed it so much, and I'm so glad right. that the, the two of you together did what you did. Right. And because I, I rarely he was he was a workaholic, and everybody knew that. But he enjoyed it. He enjoyed it. Now, one of the things I enjoy is cooking, and you're going to help me when we come back in just a second. You're going to help me cook. We're going to cook a simple recipe because I'm about simple. So y'all hang around. Bob and I'll be back. We're going to talk a little bit more, and we're going to cook a little bit. So hang around. We'll be right back. Folks, I'm so glad you hung around. Today, simple, simple recipes. We're approaching the holiday season, and I love doing simple things. Now, one of my favorite simple recipes incorporates Savannah cinnamon products. And has your wife ever used this to make I Savannah cinnamon juice? Oh, man. This product comes out of Savannah, Georgia. And today, we're going to make a blackberry cobbler that doesn't have blackberries at all. It has pineapple pieces, and to the pineapple pieces, these are actually crushed pineapple, we're going to add the blackberry flavoring. Now, this is Joey. He loves this recipe. Oh. I've made this before, and, and my son Joey loves this recipe. There's our blackberry juice, and this comes from Savannah, Georgia. It's a great little company owned by a husband and wife team, mm -hmm. and they have got some awesome recipes. Now, to this, your wife Susie makes a dump cake. This is a lot like a dump cake. We have done pineapple, blackberry. Now we're gonna put our cake mix. And Bob, I want you to just drizzle the butter on top of this. There you go. That's one stick of butter, so we've used our cake mix. Now we're gonna cover this in pecans, which is another Southern tradition. You know, it's great to be a Southern cook. Southern cooks are really, we got some great ingredients to work with. We've got pecans and butter, and you know we're gonna use butter at my house. Now, Bob, will you hand that to Mama Lucy? And Mama Lucy, throw that in the oven for me. This is gonna cook for about 25 minutes, and today I surprised myself, and I'm gonna spoil myself today, and I'm gonna share something with y'all that I have been enjoying for 50 years. I hate to admit my age, but January 29th, one of my favorite restaurants in the world is gonna have a 50th anniversary. And in this Tupperware bowl is a sub sandwich from Gabriel's in Orlando. We had these flown up. Now we've just made the simplest dessert in the world. And I am gonna provide the best sub sandwich in the world. Gabriel's has been in business since, how old am I? Let's see, I'm 56. They've been in business since 1958. Mm -hmm. this, this family started in a little tiny gas station. Uh -huh. I lived in College Park in Orlando, and this was three blocks from my house, so it was wonderful. Oh, it was great. We would walk up there every day, and yesterday I called Gabriel's, and I said, guys, I'm having a Gabriel attack. They flew these up here for us. So I'm gonna share these sandwiches. And you said your wife Susie likes hot peppers. These do have some hot peppers on them. But Bob, I'm telling you, if you don't like the hot peppers, you take them off and you enjoy the world's best sub sandwich. Now, according to Sherry Martin, my children love it. I love it. And this family, the parents are in their 80s now. Their son now runs the business. And uh, Kevin sent us these up, and I'm so excited to share this with y'all. You know, friends and memories are what life's all about. Right. And this is one of my favorite memories of my childhood. I went to school with Jeannie Seagraves, whose uncle owns Gabe's. And now look at that. That is, oh my gosh, it's so simple. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's why I enjoy these subs. They are so simple, right. and they're so good. And the combination of oregano and oils, you can't beat it, guys. So if you're in Orlando, or if you're not, call them and see if they'll send you some up UPS next day air. <laughs> so, but we're going to enjoy this. We've enjoyed today with you. It's been fun. Well, thank you. It's been fun. 
um, what you do has helped so many kids who have enjoyed and learning about John Deere tractors. I appreciate that. And I appreciate you coming to help me. Now, can you smell those peppers? Oh, yes. Do they smell good? <laughs> yes, they do. Yes, they do. Thank you, Gabriels, for doing this for us. And as the holidays come, you want it to be simple. You want it to be fun. You want to enjoy your friends without stressing out. And I have a saying, everybody knows my new saying, don't plan your life, live your life. And, and have fun doing it and, and do simple things that are easy. Now, we've got our simple, simple recipe cooking. It'll be ready in just a couple of minutes and then we're gonna enjoy that with our sub sandwich. So we'll hang around, wait on this. We're gonna cut these up and get them ready. Now folks, we've got our simple, simple blackberry less cobbler cooking in the oven. And we're gonna have these sandwiches. The cobbler will take a few minutes. We'll get our sandwich tray ready. And then we're gonna enjoy it. So hang around. We're gonna have Mama Lucy come and eat with us. And I think we have a couple more guests who are gonna enjoy these Gabriel subs. You've never had one, have you? No, I haven't. Well, hang around and we're gonna have one. It'll be just a minute. And when that cobbler comes out, a simple, simple meal, that's gonna be a good one. Right. Wow, Bob, that smells great. Well, it this does. smells better. We've got Savannah Cinnamon. We've got Gabriel Sub Shop. There can't be anything any better. Now, you're going to take Miss Susie one of these home, aren't right. you? Yeah, you're going to get some brownie points, I promise you. Oh, good. The Gabriel Sub, <laughs> that's a brownie point for sure. Now, she's from, she lived in Miami, so she had good Cuban food, didn't she? Yes. Yeah, yeah, so she'll, she'll yeah. like this. Italian she'll love food. this idea. Yeah. Yes, yes. And, and guys, this recipe is so simple, and it's on the Savannah Cinnamon bottles. And, you know, look online, check with us, but we do sell the product, and it is great. We've also made, Bob, try this. This is peach lemonade, and it's made with a Savannah Cinnamon peach product that has some great recipes. Isn't that mm -hmm. good? Got some fresh mint out of my yard, and, or kudzu. Is that mint or kudzu, Mama Lucy? I think that's mint. <laughs> that's mint. <laughs> that's mint. Guys, today has been a good day. Simple recipes, great subs, and, and the kind of thing with friends. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you, Megan. We're going to enjoy a sandwich now. Right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you again next week. Bye-bye. Hi folks, it's been great having you into my house. I love you visiting and I love coming into your home. And one of my favorite things to share with you is gospel music. You know I love gospel music, I promote gospel music and I welcome you now to sit back, relax and listen to one of my favorite groups. I think you're gonna like this. Stay tuned now. Trouble there will be, sorrow in that eternally bright tomorrow there will be, for the sun of that land of love there will be, for the there will be, no crying there will be, no dying but joy. Joy in that land, I get happy, I want to sing and shout, I get happy, I want to walk about, I get happy, and I want to tell the whole wide world about him. I get happy, I want to praise his name, I get happy, let hallelujah be ring, I get happy, and I want to tell the whole wide world about him. Well, the woman tell the world about him. Say that I'm on my way to that land Say that there'll be me trouble there'll be The sun will win that eternally bright Tomorrow there'll be For the sun will hide that land The love and there'll be The body there'll be The crying there'll be The dying with you Joy in that land